Hey, what's going on, y'all? I'm Brumble Gaming, the home of the gaming. And let's be honest here, Super Mario Sunshine is easily one of Mario's strangest games ever made. Fact. Don't get me wrong, this game is bursting with charm and is really fun to play, most of the time, but it's also very unpolished and quite broken. Because Super Mario Sunshine didn't see the high level of fine tuning that many other 3D Mario games did, there are many, many levels in this game that will frustrate the living daylights out of the player because they just won't work 80% of the time. You probably know about the most infamous levels in this game, such as the Pachinko Machine and the Watermelon Festival, but there are so many others that are such a nightmare to complete that not that many people talk about. So today, I'm going to be ranking what I personally think are the top 10 hardest levels in Super Mario Sunshine to show y'all how crazy difficult and stupid this game gets. And before we start, I just really quickly want to say that this video is sponsored by Dragon City! Dragon City is a super fun dragon racing simulator that is free to play on Android, iOS, as well as Windows. And you can download the game right now by using the link in the description. There are over 1,000 different dragons to collect in Dragon City. And with these dragons, you can build your own city that develops as you progress in the game. Plus, you can breed two different dragons together to get new and unique ones which you can feed to evolve over time. But that's not all, folks! On top of all of that, you can train your own dragons and take them in battle so that you can make them even more powerful! There are many different online PvP modes that let you fight against your friends and challenge other dragon masters across the world. And if you thought that wasn't enough, there's also several events every week for players to discover and try out new adventures. My personal favorite events are the heroic races, where you race seven other players around an island by completing tasks. And for all you Minecraft fans out there, you can find your favorite YouTubers in Dragon City, such as Socks for One, George Not Found, and even Dream himself. Now, I personally don't play Minecraft that much, but if you like Minecraft, you like gaming. And since you do like gaming, you should definitely check out this game right here. In fact, if you click the link in the description, you'll get a special free reward when you sign up. 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and even the rare Citadel Dragon. So what? are you waiting for? Make sure to download Dragon City for free today by using the link in the description. Thank you so much to Dragon City for sponsoring today's video. With that all said y'all, let's jump right into the list. Kicking it off at number 10, we have Serena Beach's 8th level, Red Coins in the Hotel where you're given 5 whole minutes to collect 8 red coins scattered around Hotel Delfino. While that may sound like a lot of time to get 8 measly coins, it's not as simple as you might think it is. For one, you have to keep in mind that Hotel Delfino is massive, as it spans 4 different floors and is filled to the brim with secret entrances, hidden pathways, and locked rooms that can easily take you 2-3 to three minutes to get into. So when you put the player in the middle of all of that and task them with finding 8 red coins with no indications to where they might be, yes, 5 minutes is quite a challenging timer. Pinpointing where these red coins are is the hardest part of this level, as while the first 4 coins are easily seen and obtainable from the start, the last 4 are hidden in secret rooms throughout the hotel, some of which you wouldn't even think about going into. It doesn't help matters that if you accidentally go into the wrong room looking for these coins, you often won't be able to go back to the room that you just came from. This will force you to return to the main lobby of the hotel and go through a ton of backtracking, draining lots of seconds if not whole minutes off the timer. So yes, while this level doesn't have any broken mechanics or awful design, it is still quite challenging to beat, especially during your first couple of tries, due to the tight timer of the speedrun and the extensive layout of Hotel Delfino. Man, don't you just love the Piantas in Super Mario Sunshine? I know I sure do. I especially love it when they say that they were Chuckster and then they chuck my Chucksterd body into the Chuckster Void of Oblivion over and over and over again. It's great! And the secret of the village underside, number 9 on our list, is completely based around using these Chucksters to get thrown from platform to platform, eventually all the way to the Shine Sprite. The problem here is that this gimmick is designed in the absolute worst way possible. You would think that when you talk to these chucksters, they would throw you in the direction that you're facing. But of course, that's not how it works. Instead, someone thought it was a great idea for these chucksters to throw Mario at the angle that he makes proportionate to their own body. Meaning that if you talk to a chuckster facing straight forward, but are a tiny bit to the left of him, whoops, straight into the void you go. 
What's even worse about this is that the trucksters are constantly walking around this level, making it very difficult to line up the perfect angle in the area to talk to them while they move themselves about. There is almost no margin of error here, and any minor slip up results in your instant death, making you go through every single truckster all over again. This level is incredibly frustrating and one of the most mechanically broken in this game, as the amount of precision you need for such a simple mechanic of talking to an NPC makes this level a nightmare to go through. You know, usually when I hear the word festival, I associate that with a good time, but I can tell you for certain that you won't be having a good time with Gelato Beach's Watermelon Festival, because this festival just sucks. Here, the festival manager is looking for the biggest watermelon of all time to win their contest and get awarded with a shine sprite. You can find multiple watermelons scattered on the beach that can be slowly rolled over to the manager's stand, but of course, every one of those he will scoff at and say, that's not big enough. So you want to know what the biggest watermelon is? All the way up on top of a gigantic hill at the highest point of the stage! But finding that watermelon is the easiest part of the level, as it's the process of getting that watermelon to the manager that is the most difficult and most tedious part. See, you can only move this watermelon around by pushing it or spraying it with water. And if it touches a single enemy, the water, or even a single wall with the slightest bit of force, it'll instantly pop and respawn back at the top of the hill. And wouldn't you know it, Gelato Beach is completely littered with enemies that you can't kill, only temporarily stun. If you want to succeed at completing this level, you have to treat this watermelon with the utmost of care. And that's easier said than done thanks to this game's high sensitivity of the movement inputs. The best way that I've found to beat this one is stunning every single enemy that's in the watermelon's path before you start moving it. And even though that sounds like a huge chore, it works way better than gunning it with the enemies still walking around. Even still, thanks to how fragile the watermelon is and the crowded layout of Gelato Beach, you're gonna be in for a world of hurt with this one. The secret levels are regarded as some of the most frustrating shines to get in Super Mario Sunshine, and for good reason. These levels strip the player of the flood nozzle and put them up against precise platforming challenges that they'll have to beat only using Mario's base moveset. Seeing as how you're given the flood nozzle at the very start of the game, these levels often feel stiff and clunky without it, and their crazy, weird design doesn't make completing them any easier. The shell secret from Noki Bay is hands down the hardest secret level, as it has some of the most challenging jumps and platforming sections out of the entire game. You're gonna have to pull off some crazy stunts to get through this one, from using triple jumps and spin jumps and wall jumps into ledge grabs to running up steep slopes diagonally without sliding down, and even using diagonal backflips to climb up a giant spinning tower. With how much variety there is in the obstacles of this level, you're basically going to have to use your entire moveset in order to overcome them. Plus, just like in the secret of the village underside, all of these platforms are above a never-ending void, meaning one fall or slip up makes you immediately lose a life and sends you right back at the start. Seeing as how a lot of the wall jumps that you have to make are above nothing but huge gaps in the platforms, it's very easy to misjudge your jumps and die one second later because of it. This level demands so much mastery of Mario's base moveset in its unique, tight platforming challenge and having to do all of that without Flood easily makes the stage one of the hardest in the game. Come on, you knew it was going to show up on this list somewhere. At number 6 we have Corona Mountain, the final level of the main story of Super Mario Sunshine. And for the final story level in a Mario game, it ramps up the difficulty curve a huge amount. Most of the main stages in Super Mario Sunshine have you traveling through these big, open-ended areas with an emphasis on exploration and not that much danger of death, but Corona Mountain is the exact opposite of that. Here you have to go through an incredibly linear level with death traps and lava everywhere you look, and all these hazards will instantly kill you if you come into contact with them. The level can be split into three different sections, one where you have to hover between spike blocks and platforms on fire, one where you have to use a boat to cross over the lava, and one where you're required to rocket jump from one cloud to another. Out of all these sections, this second is what you're going to have the most trouble with. Now using a boat to travel through lava sounds simple enough. But just like almost everything else in this game, this boat is controlled by using the Flood Nozzle, the most reliable mechanic to ever exist in a Mario game. 
To make matters worse, the boat is crazy unwieldy and overly sensitive to any sprays from the nozzle. It's so unwieldy, in fact, that you can't turn it unless it's completely stopped moving in the lava. So if you start moving the boat the wrong way and immediately try to turn it around, it'll just start moving faster and crash into a wall, sending you straight into the lava. Especially for the final level of the main story in this game, Corona Mountain is a brutal monstrosity. It has everything that makes a Mario Sunshine stage hard. A tedious layout, broken mechanics, and an absurd amount of instant death traps. Oh great, hey everyone look, the Chucksters are back! And if you thought the original Chuckster level wasn't bad enough, well then don't you worry there's even more Chuckstering fun to be had! Because once you beat the main secret level, you'll come to learn that the Village Underside also has a red coin mission! That's right, these developers found a way to make this level even worse! Now you have to use these broken Chucksters to chuck yourself into 8 red coins all within 1 minute and 30 seconds! Why? Just why, dude? In a level where you have to take your time to perfectly align yourself with these Chucksters, adding in a speedrun timer as tight as this is brutally unfair. Because you're on such a tight timer, you'll want to be more rushed when talking to the Chucksters, but being more rushed will just cause them to mess up your angle, making them chuck you way off course and into your death. And it couldn't just be a normal speedrun, of course not, because this one makes you grab 8 red coins placed in the most random spots in this level. Like for real, two of these coins are in a section of the level that I didn't even know existed when I beat it for the first time because it requires you to completely deviate from the main path by rotating the camera 180 degrees to find this hidden island with a tightrope way above everything else. Like what? Why is this even here? Unlike the red coins in Hotel Delfino, you're going to be stretched thin for time here. It's very likely that if you do beat this level, it will be with single digit seconds if not milliseconds on the timer. Because this level combines the difficulty of controlling the base mechanic of the Chucksters with the intensity of a tight, non-linear speedrun, Village Underside's Red Coins is without a doubt one of the hardest and stupidest levels in this game. Whoever made this stage is an evil degenerate and should be never allowed to design any video game level ever again. I have strong feelings about these levels, can you tell? <laughs> Yoshi's Fruit Adventure is not an adventure at all. It's a mind-numbing slogfest where you have to use Yoshi to platform on thin metal towers above the water using a gimmick that doesn't work right half the time to eventually get the shine. It's not only an unenjoyable level, but it is stupid difficult as well. The worst part about this one, aside from the janky platforming and mechanics, is how punishingly tedious it is to go through. Even just getting Yoshi in this level is a big hassle, because he doesn't just want any type of fruit, oh no, of course not, he specifically wants a durian. And durians, mind you, are the only fruit in this game that you can't pick up and carry. You can only kick them around. So in order to get Yoshi again after you fall in the water, you have to swim over to this crane over here, wait for it to slowly lower in the water, ride it back up into the docks, then you gotta triple jump over to this fruit machine and ground pound it, you get the wrong fruit, so you have to go over to this other side and ground pound that side, and you get the wrong fruit again, so you go over to the other side and ground pound it again, and then you get the right fruit, but you have to watch as it bounces off the side of the dock, so you can't even kick it back up to Yoshi, haha, <laughs> funny, funny level design, everybody. So then you gotta get back on top of this thing, and ground pound it another 15 times, and then when you finally get another durian that actually stays on the dock you gotta kick it like 50 times to get it to the yoshi egg and then hey you get the yoshi back now it's time to actually start the most challenging part of this level nice so to get this shine once you do have yoshi you have to use yoshi's fruit spit to turn leaping cheap cheeps into purple moving platforms to get across the water there's a lot of problems with this for one, you never use this mechanic anywhere else in this game, so not only is it new to the player, but they're expected to use it like an expert. It's hard to use this gimmick like an expert though, because it is so inconsistent. Sometimes the cheap cheeps will spawn the platforms at the right places, and sometimes they'll be way lower or way higher than you expect, making you screw up the jump thanks to the wacky height and angles you have to come at it with. And when you do mess up one singular jump, Yoshi will turn into magical bubbles in the water and you have to get him back all over again. Yoshi's movement in this game is somehow even clunkier than Mario's, so making lengthy jumps onto small platforms with him is quite challenging and easy to mess up. This is not only a very, very difficult level, but it is easily one of the worst in the game. If you're not going for 100% completion, just don't play this one. It'll cost you to go through way more pain than it's worth. 
Oh, you know what we have here? Here we have an amazing level known as the Pachinko Machine. I'm sure you all know what this one is. It's one of the few hidden secret levels in the hub world of Isle Delfino. For this level, you have to traverse through a giant Pachinko Machine and collect 8 red coins in the different slots as you fall, sliding back down and bouncing back up the launcher every time you grab one. Sounds like it should be a lot of fun, right? Well, it is most certainly not, in case you haven't been picking up on a pattern, because this level is the most broken, glitchy thing in this game. When you start up the pachinko machine using the launcher, the level suddenly wants to take control of Mario's movement for you, randomly throwing him way to the right or the left. And if you try to counter that movement using Flood's hover, it's going to be an uphill battle, because that'll usually just cause you to screech a halt in the air, making you eventually run out of the hover and fall straight down. Plus, Mario's interactions when he lands on a pin can cause him to start freaking out in place and get thrown in a random direction, often messing up the plans you had to grab a red coin. Because of the janky movement control within this machine, actually landing Mario into one of the five slots is very challenging, especially since the slots are quite small for such a large machine. You'll be missing these slots a lot when you try and beat this level. And guess what happens when you aren't able to land in any of the slots on one go through? Do you have to go back in the launcher machine to try it again? No, of course not, because that just makes too much sense. If you miss the slots, you'll fall straight out of the pachinko machine and into your death down below, resetting all of the coins from each of the slots that you might have gotten before. Oh, the machine decided that your momentum is going to be so messed up that it's going to throw you to the bottom? Oh well, too bad, time to start all over again! Isn't that fun? Aren't you having fun? Aren't we having fun with this level? Aren't we? Aren't we? You know, it's quite ironic that Pino Park, despite appearing as this fun, carefree amusement park, has some of the worst design levels in Super Mario Sunshine. For example, take the first stage in this world, the Mecha Bowser boss fight on a roller coaster. With this one, Mario is completely glued to a roller coaster car on a fast spiraling track and has to use the most sensitive camera controls known to mankind to shoot water rockets at a robot while it fires bullet bills that chase you down. It's a real pain in the neck. Now imagine that roller coaster level, if you will, but instead of having to hit one big target with the rockets, you have to hit 20 much smaller targets scattered throughout the track in the most inconvenient of places. And you can only pop these targets over 3 laps on the roller coaster, or else you instantly die. It's a gruesome image, right? Well that level that I just had you imagine is actually real, and it's called the Roller Coaster's Balloons. Hitting 20 targets with the game's control scheme while sitting still would be hard enough. But no, of course, you have to do this on an insanely fast paced roller coaster ride as your perspective continues just to get messed up and flipped around, throwing off many shots that you thought were perfectly aligned. Hitting some of these balloons is incredibly challenging, as it might take you a full entire lap to find that right angle at which you can even tilt the flood nozzle far enough to aim your rockets towards them. Oh, and that's another thing that I should definitely talk about, there is no consistent way to know where you're aiming your freaking flood nozzle. There is no aiming reticle, there is no rocket path indication, you just have to cross your fingers and hope that your rocket is gonna hit the balloons and not get messed up by the roller coaster's momentum. Three laps of the roller coaster is barely any leeway for completing this level, as you can easily whiff like five different shots on one singular balloon thanks to the weird depth perception that you have to aim the rockets with. The one time I was able to beat this level, I literally got the last balloon on the very last shot that I had before I got instantly killed. That alone should tell you how tight and challenging the roller coaster's balloons really is. But come on y'all, as much as I like to hype this level up, we all know that this isn't anywhere near the hardest. Because even if you've disagreed with the rest of my list so far, I'm positive that we can all agree on which level is the absolute hardest in Super Mario Sunshine. I know it, you know it. And if you don't, well then, let me show you now which one is.
It should come at no surprise at all that at number 1 on our list we have the secret lily pad level in Delfino Plaza. With this one, you've got to collect 8 red coins by trying to steer a disintegrating lily pad down the fastest river in the universe that instantly kills you if you so much dip your toes into it. These coins soar by so fast that you won't have any time to steer the lily pad fast enough to grab them. If you try to jump off the pad to snag one, it'll keep blazing down the river without you, resulting in instant death. If you try to walk on the edges and hover to grab the coins, you'll quickly find that they're placed way too low to even try anything like that, resulting in instant death. If you take too long by putting the brakes on the lily pad and taking it slow, the lily pad disintegrates resulting in instant death. This is the most painful, most torturous level in the game. It will shred through your lives like paper. Even when you think you might be doing good, the lily pad will not respond correctly and ruin any chances you had of beating the level. Lily Pad River deserves the title of the hardest level in Super Mario Sunshine. And while it isn't the hardest in the entire Mario series, I can guarantee you that it comes pretty dang close. Well hey gamers, thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, why not leave a like and subscribe? You can check out some of the other top 10s that I've done by clicking on either of the cards on screen right now. And yet again, a huge thank you to Dragon City for sponsoring today's video. You can go ahead and check out the game right now by clicking the link in the description. With all that said, I'll see y'all in the next vid. Bramble Gaming, over and out.